The Cross family, you could say, are the main antagonists of the forest. Between Matthew Cross causing the crash of the plane and stealing your child, only to kill him to resurrect his daughter, to his daughter Megan, being the literal boss fight of the game as she transforms into a nightmarish Lovecraftian horror. I think it's at least fair to say. Today though, I really wanted to explore the history of this family and what led them to their unfortunate end on the hellish peninsula. The Cross family, from what knowledge we have, is comprised of Mrs. Cross or Jessica Cross, Matthew Cross and their daughter Megan Cross. As we don't have a lot of information on uh, Jessica Cross, I will first talk about Matthew Cross whilst touching on the others a little and most of what we know about his daughter. Matthew Cross, who is commonly known as the Red Man or Red Cannibal from the forest, is the shared main protagonist of the forest. From what we know of Matthew and his partner, we can say that their relationship was at best troubled. We get this from a restraining order placed between one Matthew and Jessica Cross. This is supposedly the earliest events uh, that we know of in the family's life. The restraining order was placed on Matthew by his wife Jessica for unknown reasons. However, the exact reason can be speculated due to his abusive nature. This is also supported by drawings that his daughter had done of her father, depicting him as a monstrous figure. What caused him to become uh, abusive could have been his overexposure to the ancient artifacts, but let me explain a little more first. Matthew and Jessica's daughter, Megan, was supposedly sick with some kind of undisclosed disease. Her father, Matthew Cross, was a scientist and was eventually involved in the uh, Sahara Therapeutics Company within the Jarus Project. The aim of the company's research into the peninsula and the forest's ancient artifacts and the mutants was to try and to discover the grounds for the cure of many human diseases and even aging itself, leading to a possible immortality treatment. It's possible because of Megan's sickness that Matthew believed he could cure her by taking her to the facilities on the peninsula and researching and experimenting on her there. Before Megan would get there though, we do know that uh, Matthew Cross experimented on a number of children at the forest facility. These tests would, more often than not, mutate the children into horrific and terrifying creatures that would serve as milestones to the company's future research. It's likely Matthew pitched this idea to his wife, and the result was a devastating and possibly violent disagreement between the two, with Jessica attempting to keep Megan away from her father who was at this point becoming a more and more disturbed individual. These events likely led to Megan's growing disdain and distrust of her father. Shortly after these events, Jessica Cross would meet her demise at the hands of a violent stabbing and trauma to the head. While there is not any hard evidence for it, I would be one to think that Matthew Cross had a part to play in her death. The man was obviously not the sanest of people and fearing for his daughter's life to her disease and thinking that he had the potential cure, it's very possible that he thought he had to do what he had to do. With Jessica now out of the way, there was nothing to stop him from taking Megan. He brought her to the facility via helicopter and begun his work with her. Megan at this point was just a normal child with the addition now of having to deal with her worrisome father and to deal with the loss of her mother which was obviously some amount of emotional distress placed on her. It's assumed that Sahara wasn't aware completely of the full extent of Matthew Cross's experiments, as during uh, his and his daughter's stay at the facility, he was fired for misuse of the company's equipment. We don't know if this was on the same day as the Armsy broke containment and caused a larger outbreak in the facility, causing Megan's death. However, there is a much more likely chain of events where the containment break uh, or breach leading the Armsy to killing Megan was what got Matthew Cross fired as he then tried to use the resurrection obelisk to bring her back to life with the company firing him for misuse of the equipment. However, the storyline here is still a bit shaky so it's up to you guys which scenario you would like to go with and which one you think fits better. After the facility fell, it was only supposedly Cross left behind to mourn his diseased and dead daughter. 
However, mourn he did not. Instead, Matthew Cross became obsessed with resurrecting her through the resurrection obelisk. To do so, he needed another live test subject, and so causes the plane crash that is the opening scene of the forest via the second EMP artifact. He travels to the wreckage whilst continuing to spiral into madness, evident in his notes, she's not dead, she's sleeping, and don't be afraid, just believe. And once finally arriving, he snatches up Timmy, the main protagonist's son, and then returns to the facility with haste. Surprisingly, Matthew Cross appears to treat Timmy with a great deal of care, considering his supposedly abusive nature. However, this could simply be due to him not wanting to damage the key to his daughter's resurrection. He is able to resurrect his daughter, however, with grave consequence. While she maintains briefly some normality, the effects of the dark ancient device quickly become present as she begins to exhibit psychotic tendencies against her father. She possibly pieced together her father's role in her mother's demise and in ruining their collective lives. When lashing out, she transforms into a physical version of her mental trauma, a terrifying, great Lovecraftian beast that murders her father by stabbing him repeatedly, leaving him with the same wounds inflicted on her mother before she is brought to an end by Timmy's father as he comes to face her in the boss battle of the forest. The Cross family story is that of tragedy and violence, with everything from Matthew, Megan and Jessica's damaged lives forging a wild physical manifestation of Megan's pain and heartache, as well as the insanity that had plagued her in the form of her father. We know that the obelisk causes mutations in the test subjects. However, Megan's was raw and most drastic in nature. Timmy, as we see, is able to hold back the physical changes to his body made by the obelisk. But when everything in your life is corrupted and your mind diluted by the damage, what is there to hang on to? Maybe there is a mental component to the mutations and unfortunately for Megan, her soul was already disfigured and now to follow was her failing body. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification if you never want to miss out on another upload from Project Archivist. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member through the join button on the channel homepage. There is also a link in the description. And with that, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.